Hello, how are you doing today? This is Logan Penny, and I'm going to be recording a overview of the pre-release of the ArcGIS Maps SDK for Unreal Engine 5, which was just released on April 15th. The blog article explains the new application and its use within Unreal Engine 5. It lightly goes over the road ahead and the plans that they have within Unreal Engine 5. I've perused and gone over all the product documentation as well, I have gone ahead and signed up for a beta account with the uh, RC as well as a developer account with the ArcGIS Maps for Unreal Engine. The ArcGIS Maps SDK for Unreal Engine has thoroughly documented the procedure for installation as well as where to get started, whether you're using C++ Blueprints or the Modes UI. I will be going over the tutorial from their website following the modes UI style. Here we are inside of Unreal Engine 5. Go into your settings, plugins, and type in ArcGIS. You'll see that I have already downloaded and installed the ArcGIS plugin. For more information on how to do that, click on the documentation and it will highlight exactly how to install the plugin for your project. We're going to start by going to a brand new empty level. Inside of your empty level, you want to go to the world settings and enable large worlds. It is essential to have the plugin working. Next, you'll be going over to the select mode and clicking on the ArcGIS plugin at the very bottom. Once you have the ArcGIS mode open, select the maps, ensure that enable editor mode is ticked and set your maps to global. We're then going to click create. This will create a set of actors within your world outliner, and you can see there is the ArcGIS map actor, the map view, and the ArcGIS pawn. In the origin location, we're going to start at minus 74 longitude, 41 latitude, zero altitude, and we're going to be using the spatial reference well-known ID 4326. Once you've set that up, we're going to move over to the camera tab, and we are going to set the camera position to a longitude minus 74.054921, latitude 40.691242, altitude 3000 meters. We'll then change the camera rotation to 65 on the heading, 68 on the pitch, and zero on the roll. Under the base map tab, there are several modes that you can display. We're going to be sticking with world imagery, which is similar to Google satellite street view. Under the Elevation tab, ensure Enable Elevation is turned on. Next, click on Authentication and copy and paste the API key that you created within your account. We'll begin to add lighting to the scene. Click on the drop-down under Lights, add a directional light, click on directional light. We're going to change the lighting to movable and we're going to set its location and rotation to a 000 for location and a minus 28 on both the header and pitch. We're then going to set the intensity to 3.1416, change the dynamic shadow distance movable light to 2 million. In the atmospheric cloud section, enable atmospheric sunlight. It should be on by default. In the actor spawn collision handling method, change this to always spawn ignore collisions. Back in our adding actors tab, Go under Lights and add a skylight. We want to set this to real-time capture enabled. You'll see that we now need to add a sky atmosphere for this to work properly. Back into the Addition tab, go into Visual Effects and bring in a sky atmosphere. We're going to set the ground radius to 6378.137207, which is the radius of the Earth. Once all your lighting is set up, and we begin to pull back from the map actor, you'll see that we begin to have the world taking shape here. I'm adjusting the directional light to various angles to get lighting on our globe so that we can see that we in fact do have an atmosphere and a globe. If you pilot the ArcGIS pawn, it might not necessarily be in the proper position you'd like, so you might have to dial that in by piloting it and moving around. If you go into the camera tab settings, 
you'll see that I've changed the camera setting to be 3 million feet, uh, meters above the earth. Next, click on your layers tab and we will begin to add ArcGIS image layers. We will be adding the New York transit frequency as the first layer name and I will attach the URLs for all of the layers with the tile sets that are listed online as the example. When you've typed in the name and address, hit add, and we will go and get the next layer, layer two, which will be New York industrial area. Follow the same process by copying and pasting the URL inside of the field, then clicking add. Our third layer will be the New York population density and is the same process by copying the ArcGIS tile from the map server and clicking add. Next, on the drop down layer type, select ArcGIS 3D model. We are going to be adding in the New York buildings using the URL tile map that is provided. Click on add. Under the layer section, on the drop downs, you'll be able to change the opacity of each layer type. As an example, change layers 1 to 0 0.9 and layer 2 to 0 0.6. We have now successfully configured the UI to present the data of New York and its surrounding. I'm going to change my settings to unlit. That way I can see the globe without any lighting. I'm going to dramatically increase my camera settings and I am going to fly around until I find the Great Lakes, which are a landmark that I recognize that is close to New York. And from there, I'm going to zoom in on the layers that we just created. You'll see that I'm setting my camera speed to the maximum of eight, which is still not enough. And then I am going to go in and increase it by a factor of 1000. Some trial and error might be required. And as you are witnessing, I'm going very, very slowly with my camera until I increase the scalar multiplier within the camera settings to 1000. You'll now see that I'm able to fly around the planet, which is to scale uh, at very fast paces. And I am trying to orient myself using geographic landmarks and I found a pole and we're not going near the pole. So we must be on the South Pole. I have discovered South America on the globe and now I will be making my way north all the way up to North America and then honing in on the East Coast. Here we are. I see the data, the population density and the traffic density and we are in the New York City vicinity. With the camera at this magnitude, it is very difficult to adjust your navigation. So once again, you're probably going to need some trial and error in order to find out what fits best for the work that you're doing with the ArcGIS data. I've adjusted my camera speed and I've zoomed in and I am beginning to have the 3D model data populating the scene here. I've only been to New York City once for a couple of days, so I'm trying to get my bearings and the landmark that I'm using to identify which zone I'm in is none other than the popular Central Park. Now that I've found what looks like the main area of New York City, I've went and changed my lighting back to lit mode and I am searching around for where Central Park is. Uh, we can tell that we're in the main area because there's just tons of skyscrapers. And if you look off to the right, you will see that Central Park is on the periphery. Now a trick in order to getting my camera to where I am in the viewport is going in and adding a empty actor, which acts as a null. I'm going to then parent my ArcGIS pawn by attaching it to that actor, zeroing out its location and rotation, then detaching it from the null and piloting that actor so that I am now 
looking through the ArcGIS camera. You'll note that the uh, movements are still quite difficult because the camera settings are very, very fast and getting orientation while moving around is somewhat challenging. So we've found Central Park, we're in New York here, and we have populated all of our layer data, population density, industrial zone, traffic frequency, and our 3D models. And it's uh, quite amazing the power of the program, uh, power of the plugin ArcGIS mixed with the Esri data. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly. The next steps would be to take this information and this data and using the Omniverse Esri connector, incorporate this world and this data inside of the Omniverse in conjunction with potentially other application data or um, SDK kits that have been created uh, in order to work with Omniverse. The ArcGIS plugin has a ton of potential to be extremely useful in doing real world simulations and tracking uh, real world data on a large scale. I'm very excited to see where the plugin goes in the next several months. Thank you for watching this demonstration. Bye now.